Hickok 45, ready for some more Marlin 1894 fun, specifically 44 Magnum. And we'll just start by waking up the gong. Uh-oh, got there fast, didn't it? Must be a Magnum round. <laughs> I think I held too high. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and do some buffalo hunting. You want to? Bison. Knocked him right over. How about that ram? Did I go high or low? Let's hold her up a little more. There we go. All right. I need to shoot my guns more often, like all of them every day, don't I? As a reminder of where to hold. Boom. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. I wonder how many rounds it'll take to knock those bowling pins off. <laughs> Make short work of, of a two liter. And before we uh, empty this first magazine, let's smoke a little pot. Yeah, boy. Roll a pin or two. <laughs> all right. Load on Sunday and shoot all week. Look at that gun smoke coming out of there. I'm sick. Yep, so are you for watching. Yep, this is the old Cowboys Limited. 44 Magnum, uh, y'all saw hopefully the first video. I will link to it. And I, this is one of my favorite rifles, you could say, couldn't you? <laughs> because I have, uh, you know, a handful of the Cowboy Limited Marlin 1894s. And uh, hopefully you have seen all those videos with the 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, 45 Colt, yeah. And even the uh, 22 long rifle in the Cowboy Limited models, that's, uh, what is that, an 1897? I forget the model number on those. So uh, just very, very nice rifles. I've not had this one in quite a year either. We uh, brought it out six or eight months ago. And uh, I was in the mood to shoot it again. So I thought I'd invite you along. So how's that? Pretty, pretty cool. 44 Magnum coming out of a longer barrel. Get quite a bit of thrust that way uh you know with a 24 inch barrel pretty cool arms okay so let's shoot something you want to shoot something i was going to try some specials now I, yeah i think i have done that in this firearm but uh, some some of these lever guns they uh they have a little bit of an issue with shorter cartridges which is understandable there's one reason 22 long rifle lever guns uh i think generally are just chambered for the long rifle and of course semi-automatic rifles and pistols they're generally long rifle only you know they get them designed and where they'll feed long rifle that one length of a, of a cartridge uh, reliably as possible you start messing with the length and shorten it and loading shorter rounds sometimes you have you know trouble and uh, quite often and with these though sometimes you don't uh, these are some specials uh, these are uh, yeah some fiokis uh, See you in a minute. All right, we're back. We got them out of there. Had to finagle it around a little bit. Uh, something about, I don't know, that brass or, uh, I don't know, it was just too tight. I thought I had tried specials in it, and I got some other specials, and I got some own hand load specials, but I'm just not going to get into that today. I, I get it out for the chapter two, so just enjoy, shoot. Yeah, why else would you get out of firearm? But I, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to deal with that today. You know, this is not a test and all that. I will. I will uh, shoot some specials and experiment with that sometime and uh, report back to you. Maybe I'll get it out on a Sunday morning and we'll mess with it or uh, let you know. I just wanted to get it out and shoot it. I didn't want to get into a rigmarole about what it'll feed and what it won't. I thought I had tried specials in it. Maybe that was my 357 and 38 specials you know, of this gun. And I, maybe I've not tried. I don't know what it's about. So anyway, as with any firearm, uh, be sure you try specific ammo. <laughs> as I have said many times that you plan to shoot, hunt with, or practice with, or carry in a carry gun, whatever you want to experiment with, with ammo, and bullet types, bullet shapes, and all that sort of thing. All right. I guess that's what I was doing today. I just didn't mean to do it on camera and, you know, hang up the, the works here. So, all right. 
let's try let's try the two liter right there. <laughs> Thought I saw a deer over there. It's not a deer. We saw some earlier over there. Woo! Forty four Magnum takes care of it. Oh man. Quite a difference from hitting them with a nine millimeter, huh? You know, this is pretty warm stuff. So why don't I go ahead and hit this watermelon? You want to? Now this melon, uh, here I go, making excuses already. It has been around here for about a month and a half or longer. I forgot about it. I had it in a container and uh, just remembered it. So I don't know if it'll blow up bigger or it's less likely to blow or what. But let's shoot it anyway. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Proof's in the pudding. <laughs> yep, we found out. It was ready to blow. What about you, bowling pin? <laughs> you red plate. Yeah, pretty nice, huh? Yeah, this, these pretty nice, like butter, yeah, with the right ammo. All right, let's go over there. Uh, I'm going to try that uh, bison on the right. He never wants to fall. And he did today. He really set hard, always. What about that pig on the top row? Oh boy. In a cloud of dust. How about that red plate on the left? Oh. Helps have ammo, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll shoot a few handlers. It's for kicks. Yeah, we really appreciate wideners.com uh, providing uh, support for the channel. Uh, it's great. I think I already said to uh, just check the description of any video and it'll give you, uh, you know, uh, coupon code Hickok45 and all that. Save a little money and uh, it's really nice to have support from wideners.com. And uh, these are some of my hand loads, but uh, they don't sell my hand loads. I, I, don't, I don't market my hand loads. I know back in the 70s it occurred to me at one point when I got into loading big time in the 80s. I, yeah, maybe that'd be something I could do in spare time, just make extra money, uh, hand load and uh, sell hand loads and that kind of thing. I just looked into it briefly and I think at the time you'd have over a million dollars worth of insurance to even think about that, you know, as you can imagine. Uh, yeah, a little risky. If I were an insurance company, I wouldn't insure a hand loader without a pretty hefty premium, would you? Uh oh, am I going to have trouble again? You know, something might have changed with my rifle a little bit. Uh, some adjustment. If I loosen something or tighten something up. Uh, sure with that that lifter is sort of hanging up in there and that's of course just random different oh i know what the problem <laughs> well yep that's right i did bring out some of, of my specials these are my 44 specials that i hand load okay and i had forgotten i was thinking there were some of my magnum loads so that's what it is uh so john we got to get those out again so we'll take another short break and we'll be right back back again with 44 magnum yeah let me tell you all something uh maybe you want to really test your uh, marlin 1894 make sure it uh, it will chamber 44 special and then if it doesn't seem to to like it uh don't put any in it and when you're at the shooting table don't have any out there with you <laughs> all right uh, i keep telling you all you know i'm iq challenged uh yeah, it takes me two or three times before I learn a lesson. I actually was thinking I had my hand loads in 44 Magnum out here. No, they didn't. I, they, you know, <laughs> don't realize. Oh, that's right. They had 44 Special. So it, it apparently doesn't like 44 Special. And uh, I am not going to test it anymore today. Cause we had, on that one, I had to take the uh, magazine tube out. And I know some of you get mad at me. Why you shouldn't have cut? You should have shown us how you got them out. Well, I did want you to see me with a hammer. And a, you know, and a chisel and all that. Uh, the previous time we got them out, uh, John got them out without too much trouble, but uh, this time we had to take the uh, magazine tube off and the forearm and everything and flick all that loose and dump them, you know, they're just locked up. So, yep, yeah, okay. 
I'm a slow learner, but I eventually learned the lessons. Okay, so I was I was almost finished shooting. Uh, didn't realize I was going to be doing a lot of gunsmithing today. So let's just knock something else over. Let me shoot that swinging plate over there. Boy, it's nice. This feeds so well. <laughs> feeds so so easily. Yeah. Three cinder on that barrel? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little dust. I knew that was low. Why'd I pull the trigger? I knew that one was right on. Yeah, got two, made up for the miss, huh? Anything over here to explode? We haven't exploded yet? I guess not. Yeah. Nice sound. Yeah. <laughs> Still more ammo. You know, it is 44 Magnum, so cowboy. feel neglected. <laughs> Put the last rounds on old Mr. Cowboy. Ah, oh, look at that gun smoke. All right, so uh, now it does say on the barrel, uh, 44 Remington Mag or 44 Special. My gun is lying to me. My barrel is lying to me right there, right? I, it could be with just a little bit of tuning on the lifter, seemed to be hanging up for, for some reason. Uh, that's what doesn't make sense to me. Some of you folks who are lever gun gunsmiths, uh, it was just hanging up from the get-go. It's like you didn't want to take a special, 44 special, out of the uh, magazine. It, it wasn't even, you know, wanting to come out at all. It was hanging up on the second one. So, I don't know, that may have something to do with the first one though, and I, I don't know, I don't know. So there may be some polishing, or uh, dremeling, get my dremel tool going, you know, take off a quarter inch somewhere just to see if it works. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, it's okay. I don't need to shoot 44 special. I typically don't. It's nice to know if it will. I uh, just like 38 special and 357, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I I typically don't do that. I just uh, because it's more likely to have trouble and to hang up. If it's set up for the longer cases, uh, it's been my experience anyway. And so I don't even push it. I just, uh, a lot of it's out of curiosity. Uh, and I I guess it is my 357 because I remember recently last year to being pleasantly surprised on one of the, one of my 1894s that it would handle the, the shorter you know cartridges uh, seemingly uh, very smoothly. And I was, wow, that's, that's that's different and uh so i was kind of thinking it was this one apparently not so but these are really nice rifles gosh all you have to do is shoot the ammo they're chambered for that uh they work with and uh, you know i got the skinner sights on it i love those and uh, that's really i guess the only modification to it and uh just go to 1894 marlin cowboy limited they are they are fun shooters glad you came out today to watch me have trouble Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastol.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer, 
So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.